Hello. Am I recording? Are we recording? Hello. We're live, <laughs> baby. Good morning. Welcome to the Jersey Shore. Uh, good morning. <laughs> I'm telling you, your first night at the shore is always the worst, okay? Well, it sure is. I'm hungover. I know. You're lucky I didn't wake you up with waking up in the morning. Feeling like so many things. Waking up in the morning. Thinking of so many things. I just want things to get better. I can't. <laughs> All right. No shade, Gia. We love you. Okay. I'm Krista Marie. Reality of Krista Marie. I Let love Gia. I love Gia too. I do. And you know, Gia's come a long way. But this is our salty, bitter housewife collab. And I've invited Mr. Downthorpe to, I think I'm saying your last name right. Yeah. To, okay, good. To collab so we can do a Real Housewives of New Jersey season 14 recap discussion every week. Uh. <laughs> and it's exhausting. It is. And I, I know better because I realized yesterday why I have to do this on other people's platforms, even though you will be hearing this on the Who Started You On podcast platform. And also, Mr. Downthorpe is the host of the Salty Housewives podcast, very popular podcast for Salt Lake City and Atlanta and in the Housewives community. So just let me introduce Mr. Downthorpe real quick. You want to um, talk to your listeners since we're going to be <sighs> on both our platforms? <laughs> Yes. Hello, everybody. I decided to drink very heavily last night, so I'm dealing with that now. But if you listen to my podcast, you realize I'm drunk every time I record. Um, <laughs> okay. Hello. Hi. My name is Dallin. <laughs> my podcast is called Salty Housewives. Fun fact about it. <laughs> I actually started that podcast in defense of Heather Gay. And now I despise that woman and her Ozempic face. Mm -hmm. And she can go jump off a bridge for all I care. That's my introduction. <laughs> that is the type of person I am. Also, for those of you who are bothered by pronouns, Enjoy this because I am a they them. Okay. So good morning. Good morning. <laughs> You're gonna fit right in. I am we, we, icy. We do not hold back here. Okay. Jersey is a place where like we fight hard. We love hard. But Jersey like, feels like home. It should. Because I promise you guys, like what you have just seen on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm telling you, I'm just as confused as probably Dallin is. Um, I got a little caught up yesterday, and if you guys know me very well, my side, um, I don't usually talk about Jersey because I'm allergic to seafood, for one, okay? And, you know, if you notice, there's a lobster on that cast, so Wait, I... Is, have to... Oh, that was a joke. That was funny. Okay. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, oh, I was like, me. wait. Yeah. That's... I was like, that's so sad. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> never mind. That's shady. I like it. Listen, if you watch my, um, okay, so yesterday I go live, right? And you'll see why I'm allergic to seafood. I get so worked up and upset. I have my EpiPen, which is my weed. So I don't drink, I smoke weed. So we're like, we fit in very well together. So that's my EpiPen. And um, I decided yesterday, like you now I said for you guys, we're going to recap season 14. But I feel like now, Everything I had planned for us is out the window <laughs> a little right. because it's going to wrap up. What is the online crap, the toxicity, the guys that we keep saying that we know is not our Jersey usual. Okay. Now down has gone through every season, starting from season three to 13, decided to get caught up. I also went back and I watched it too, because I figured we're going to be trying to decide team Gorga, team Judice, because People have put us in that position, unfortunately. And, Obviously. Yeah. And I said, no, guess what? We're team not Louie. Okay. <sighs> I like I like Louie. I don't I, care. I, I know you like Louie. And you might, I actually might like Louie after this. You're going to be surprised when you hear me say this. Because, Ooh. yes, 
I've realized that he has been saying that he needs to get rid of Jim, the lawyer. Okay. Now, okay. And I'm like, why would he do that? Why would he want to do something like that? Well, because Jim, the lawyer, has been corroborating with Teresa, the wifey, with Mr. (laughs) Lobsterman. Actually, they won't say Louie's name. That's what's getting me. They've all now have come out with the receipts on Twitter of them paying content creators to drag her brother, the cast members, everything I've been saying for two years. And the reason I lost my effing fucking mind yesterday, we're allowed to curse, right? I think we're allowed to curse. I don't know. Shit fuck ass cunt slut ass bitch. Yeah, that was every- Shit damn yes, fuck. Read. It was yeah. all that yesterday. <laughs> It was all that for an hour and a half. And I said, holy shit, this is why I don't do this. <sighs> because, okay, I'm just going to get, I'm going to get down caught up and I'll get you all caught up in about five seconds. I'm ready. <laughs> a couple I'm years so ago, ready. about two years ago, I had a collab on another podcast called Housewives and Headlines. Please strike it from the world. Please strike it from the universe. Get rid of it. Okay. I don't know what her involvement is in this. And if she's involved somehow, I'm just going to, we'll take her out of the equation. But if you go on Twitter, you'll see her name is involved in all the receipts that this Melissa's old nose account posted, <laughs> who's now turned on Teresa. Um, okay. Yeah. These are the names. Okay. Um, and the all true, all about the truth podcast, which is New Jersey obsessed. I believe I'm not really sure guys. I promise you that I stopped arguing with these people, these accounts when it got toxic last year. Didn't know why it was getting toxic. Just did. So my dumbass decides to go on Twitter yesterday. I was like, let me just get a little bit caught up. <laughs> I see this, I see this podcast uh, link and it is Melissa's old nose. Who's now on Teresa. <laughs> it's so funny. She's now on Gabriella. Who's Chrissy balls, <laughs> which is now the podcast with balls. I believe I'm going to link it because I'm no shade to you two. I called you a rat too many times yesterday. I'm not going to do it again today, but just know I'm wearing my rat t-shirt. Okay. Anyway, wait, not- wait, wait, sorry. Yeah. First off, yeah. <laughs> how dare anyone be offended being called a rat? Do you know that a rat father raised the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and they grew up to be crime fighting look, superheroes? Look, I didn't coin it. You gotta guess the Sopranos or maybe like Tony or what's <laughs> like the Godfather. I don't know who coined the word rat. We could call it snitch if you want. But listen, the snitches are snitching on each other. Now, what do you expect to happen when you hire a snitch to do a snitch job? A snitch is eventually going to snitch on you. So what's happening now is the snitches are snitching on Jennifer Aiden and Teresa and Jim. And they're not naming Louie, but they're saying these bitches, man. These bitches, I swear in Jersey. Leave Teresa and Jennifer. No, no, no. Because if you go on Twitter now, now what I've been saying for two years is now, now the receipts are out. There's now proof that they drug John Fuda's girlfriend, ex-wife, whatever, out of the woodwork. There's now proof that they've. Eh. I'm there. I'm. Uh, hey, <laughs> <laughs> I just. I personally. Oh no! Not the Fudas. The disloyalty of Teresa is beyond me. Okay. Now listen. Okay. Let's just because this is all going to be relevant. Unfortunately, unfortunately, just like Salt Lake City this season, it's going to be fucking irrelevant because oh, there's Lake. been some. Oh. Yeah, there's been such cooperation behind the scenes to make the fucking season, because you know, because you're loosely involved mm-hmm. with the cast, just like I'm loosely involved with Jersey, we both know what goes on behind closed doors and what's happening, right? And that's just unfortunate uh-huh. for us. Fortunate for the viewers. Unfortunate now, because they all snitch on each other. So now we're seeing how a season has been co- has made not real now, because producers and other people... <clears throat> Teresa want to create <laughs> narratives uh, because they don't have a storyline. My question is, why do you need one, Teresa? You're the head bitch, right? You are. She really is. I'm not going to deny that Teresa is the head bitch in Jersey. She has been from day one. I don't know why any longer. She has no friends. She made it clear on the reunion list, season 13, that she was no longer going to fucking film with any of them. And she made sure that she was, and I'm telling you, Dalen. And everybody listening, she was positive that Joe and Marlissa were not coming back this season. So she wanted to drag somebody else to make a storyline. She drove, she drove, drove, I can't even speak. She drugged the foodist. <laughs> so that's where the Britney thing came in. And I said, 
And, and they said on the reunion season 13, you guys will see it. You saw it. You saw it. They said, they both screamed, Fluey, you hired, you found Brittany. You had to drag us. Frank goes, you, you know, you hired this one and that one to drag us. No, us? <gasps> no. What? How dare you? We would never. Okay, Teresa, I believe you. Okay, fine. Let's go shake hands. Louie wouldn't shake his hand. Food and Frank look at him. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I actually believe, I, I really believe that, I, I believe that he did it. I believe they did it. And I said, I screamed it. I'm like, I know it's true. <laughs> he has to believe me though, right? Well, now guess what? Go to, go, just go to X Twitter, wherever you want to call it. Are we calling it Twitter's X's? I don't know. I call it garbage. Garbage. It is literally garbage. It's just the social media site where most people go to look at porn, but pretend yes. they're talking to their friends. And guess what? Reddit is its evil twin. Oh, I Reddit hate Reddit. Is X's evil twin. All right. So now that like now, so like that is literally going to make our season 14 that we're going to, now we wanted to honestly recap, look like a piece of poop. So, okay. <laughs> what I... I want to tell people Good. my introduction to not just New Jersey, but like also Teresa. Mm -hmm. um, yes, go ahead. Cause I need to take a breath. Go ahead. Whew. No, you're good. Like go, go breathe. Go like do yeah, you. Go ahead. You. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> my first glimpse into Teresa was on Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. And I entered that whole show with many preconceived notions because mm -hmm. I, at that point, had never seen the Housewives franchise. Oh. And I was watching it and I thought, wow. I'm like, Teresa really is not this big, scary, terrible woman mm -hmm. that people make her out to be. And it was my introduction to Kenya. And I was like, oh, I love Kenya, too. Oh. Ramona should have been drowned mm -hmm. on all of <laughs> Yes. the events mm -hmm. but i digress <laughs> I do so then I, and then i think all right let's watch new jersey <laughs> so to sum this up very quickly <laughs> my interpretation of teresa and why i am i'm always a team tree i i just i won't waver i won't falter okay um Watching her in early seasons just kind of broke my heart. And it broke my heart even more when her brother, her piece of shit, Oompa Loompa brother came on. Um, oh, by the way, I'm salty. That's the point of my podcast. So if that offended you, you need to listen to like yeah. uh, Barney and friends. They're used Go to away. it better. So they're used to it. Good. Okay, good. Great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love him. Teresa, unfortunately, has been around men and i'm emphasizing that on purpose mm -hmm. <clears throat> who treat her as someone without a brain now teresa is a very intelligent woman obviously she's on the show and right. we see how successful she is not only that now that her daughters are grown wow mm -hmm. they have grown into some resilient young women yeah so kudos to that yep. um joe judice triggered by every last nerve Aww. he made me feel uncomfortable mm -hmm. he was i he's very loving to his girls but as far as when it came to teresa mm -hmm. he was very rude misogynistic absolutely vile insulting <clears throat> i could not stand that man and then her brother comes on the show and the first intro i don't care what kind of family history there is right when i see a man a man because mm -hmm. these guys are so hung up on being men right at a family event the the christening right yeah you are going to choose to react the way you did nah fuck off from that moment on that guy was nothing but scum to me and i say that knowing that i've seen people in my life as a child and adult who've acted that way i see you act like that nah you can't be trusted you're dead to me you're unhinged something's off with you Mm -hmm. 
that's not that's not safe behavior yeah sorry so my introduction with Teresa was a little backwards and yeah. then obviously the newer seasons and I see her with Louie yeah. and now here's my problem when it comes to Louie right it's not with Louie oh it's with the people in the show oh no and it's with the people that view him and judge it. Because <sighs> you see Teresa and you see what she's dealt with and put up with. Right. And you see her brother and you see this lifestyle she's around. Yeah. Let's go to this video with okay. Louie of going to this thing. I don't need to watch the video. I'm not going to watch the video. I don't yeah. care to watch the video. Yeah. It, they They explained it pretty well. Great. Right. A bunch of guys like Ooga Booga and like punch. Oh, that video. Fight. That video. Got so, it. yeah. Okay. <laughs> what I may or may <laughs> not been wearing pants, may or may not been on a beach with a bunch of naked guys, may or may not been at a guy's <laughs> retreat for men to abuse women, may or may not have allegedly. I don't know. But okay. That video. Here's, yeah. Here's my thing with Louie. Yeah. Were the women there? No. No. Was he there? Yes. Is it a place for the women to go? No. Is it a place for him to go to work through things? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody deals with things in their own way. Yeah. At least he recognizes how he is. No, I'm not. I, I need to really say I don't agree with anything. Right. However, I'm just trying to look at this through a lens of yeah. understanding these people. Mm-hmm. Because I'm just a gay 35-year-old living in Salt Lake City, Utah, watching this going, oh, New Jersey and Salt Lake are very similar. Right. Um, At least he is man enough to recognize he needs to change a behavior in himself and do what he can for it. However, one thing with Louie that I appreciate, I hate, I did hate watching him in the most recent season when he went to talk with Melissa and then Joe came over, Joey came over and tree came over. Mm. There was a moment he talked to tree that really just unsettled me, made me mad. But the more I watched, I realized, okay, you're not mad or upset with her. You're mad at these two fame chasers. (laughs) I mean, they're all fame chasers, but those two anyway, (laughs) Louie is the only man that wears in name. her life, other than maybe her father, mm-hmm. who puts her needs and her safety <laughs> very high. By wearing no-nose pajamas or <laughs> sorry. Uh-huh. Do, do you know he wears no-nose pajamas to make everybody feel safe and warm at night? Good. No, no, is pu- no, no, is her dead father. Okay, just letting you know. Did you Good. miss that part where he said, "I wear your dead father's pajamas"? I honestly think that's adorable. Oh my god! Oh my god. Please, what, Dalen? If my father ever passes away, and we're ever back at the Jersey Shore, please don't wear his pajamas. <laughs> it will not make me feel safe. Well, I wouldn't. I'm not close to you. <laughs> well, just but like her. if. Listen, no, no, if my father passed and someone I'm very close to did that, that would mm-hmm. actually be very sweet. Wait, can I just, can I give you a scenario real quick? Okay. Imagine that where those pajamas, where the bottom part of those pajamas, where all no, no. Okay. And then imagine that your new husband wears them. Imagine them where your mouth is going. Just put that, just, can you just sit with that for a second? <laughs> But if I'm blowing somebody, I'm not blowing the pajamas, I'm blowing them. I don't care. They can they can wear a paper they can wear a paper bag from the grocery store and like banana peels. Yeah, as long on their as my feet. dead father's balls weren't in it, okay? <laughs> I don't care. Okay. Like we're not getting sexy in the clothes. I'm taking them <laughs> off. You. Oh, Okay. Wear That's... like little house on the prairie attire for all I care. I don't care what you're wearing. You're naked when we're doing the deed. So <laughs> Okay, sorry. I never had it. Wear my mom's wedding dress for Christ's sake. <laughs> no, like, no, 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 no. You do you, boo. I'm not gonna tell you to not dress how you want to dress. Okay. Sorry, I, I had to throw that in there. So we're rare to where he he you Matt, you admire him for making her wanting to feel safe. I get that part. 
I do. I so watching this, watching the recent season, it was messy. I honestly mm. come at me, all of you. I'm ready for it. Hello. <laughs> <coughs> The fact everyone is so up in arms with this Teresa and Melissa drama, get real. It's actually not that intense and it's not that interesting. Right. I mean, it it's right. drama for sure. But I don't know. I think for me, because it's such family stuff, I'm yeah. not so thrilled to get jump on. The, I, like, I do. I feel sad for all of them, it's, everyone involved. I do too. But. It's come to a very bad place. Yeah. What I watched, I just, I don't know. I feel like I just relate to Teresa and her family more because I feel like I've been her children yeah. on that kind, that end of that kind of a situation. Right. So seeing Gia and all of her, mostly Gia yeah. though, but all of her daughters, how they stand up for their mom and how they're not afraid to speak up. Yeah. They make me so proud because I know being that young mm -hmm. how scary that is to speak up to someone that much older than you and someone you saw as like yes. a caregiver and a safe person who no longer is a safe person anymore yeah it's a lot it's it's a lot yeah and the traumatization of when you're a child and you watch your parents fist fight or like the imagine being like i know how like Watching them fist fight and cry, like just the trauma that they have to be scared now every time that you all are around each other because yeah. you can't get it together. And they're right because it kept happening. That's freaking scary. And that would like put my wall up to like have something against my uncle going forward, even though I'm not, I solely like, so going in, like, so I understand exactly. Like I see where I can feel for Teresa. I can't. So I mean, I can feel for Teresa, but I just I feel like so like if you have like you have a sister, right? Oh, sorry. Again. Oh my gosh, this is important. Yeah, sorry, I interrupt. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I acted like I was done. Mm -hmm. One thing about Teresa and everyone around her that really pisses me off. Mm -hmm. Um. And I've noticed it from early seasons up until now. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole the whole treating her like she's stupid or treating yeah. her like she's dumb, but specifically because she just says things wrong yeah. or like pronounces words wrong. Get the fuck out of here. No. First off, we all do that. I do too, yeah. Second off, why wouldn't you just help somebody specifically, specifically one of them that sits with me when she was at that one photo shoot mm -hmm. and she was in, it was the first time she said ingredients instead oh, of just my, ingredients. Yes. Yes. Okay. Ingredients. I, yeah. I'm sure people were laughing watching that. Like I get that. But when <laughs> I saw those two women, she was saying that too. And they're just like laughing and no one's trying to help her. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was filled with rage. And then any time watching that show after, if she says something wrong or doesn't know the word to something and everyone just laughs at her, makes fun of her, mm -hmm. mocks her. Yep. Those are not friends. Those are not good people. Those are not nice people. It's one thing if you like someone says it and you laugh at them, and you're like, that's not the word. Right. And then you tell them what it is. Yeah. And then you help them say it but you choose to just sit there and laugh at someone. Yeah. Nah, fuck off with that bullshit. Stupid little bitch. Yep. Just be nice. Help them out. Ugh, I hate I that. Yeah. Everyone does that to her and everyone still does that to her. And it's Once like it happen lives. They make a joke out of it. They make a game out of it. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. Bad. Cause like, sure. And she laughs along like, ha ha ha. Like, no, mm -hmm. that that doesn't feel good. I know that doesn't feel good. Like that's I hate that. Okay, I had to say that because no, no, uh, no I I understand. Like I see, like so I really did. Like I have always been Team Teresa. Okay, now to go back to like what you saw in the very beginning with Joey, I don't know where before season three, I don't know where the anger comes from with him and her. 
from what we hear, it's Joe Gorga feels like Judice took his father from him. Oh, I know where it comes from. What, where, where? Like, I don't... I, watching... Unfortunately, okay, I'm judging this based off personal relationships within my extended family. Okay. So when I watch them, Joey specifically, but also Melissa. Yeah. When I say this, I don't mean it in such a malicious way, like maybe Tree means it. Yeah. But obviously, she's more hurt by it. We're just viewers. Right. Melissa even though on camera she was very conscious to say, Joey, go talk to your sister. Go talk to your sister. Go make up. She was aware. But she was almost aware to a point it put me off. Yeah. Because I'm like, I know why you're saying this. But it also seemed very obvious how I get how Tree says she's the one trying to take the brother away because her attitude, her mm -hmm. personality... In Tree's eyes, I see it as, yes, she's taking your brother from you. But mm -hmm. in Melissa's eyes, I see it also as I'm protecting my family, which are two very important things. Let's be very clear. Yeah. Um, but in my opinion, yeah. when it comes to whatever family drama we're allowed to see, whatever social media stuff that's super messy that mm -hmm. people put out, in my eyes, first off, they're both wrong in many things, mm -hmm. but Melissa and Joey could have and should have done more to keep that relationship intact mm -hmm. because I think what the two of them really wanted for a long time and what they finally got was a solid reason to sever the cord mm -hmm. with that relationship. Mm -hmm. And when that mm -hmm. happened with the wedding, mm -mm. it made it very easy. And mm -hmm. with the wedding, mm -hmm. one thing I one thing I really want to say, yeah, because for a while, the whole time watching that season, I'm like Teresa, just like I know she invited her the one time, and Melissa said no. And then when she was inviting other people and could see Melissa was hurt, right? Just I'm just thinking, just one more time. Just one more. But then I thought, you know what? Bug it. It's Teresa's day. And it's for Louie. She's yeah. been married. He's been married. They've never been married together. They're trying to make this a day for them mm -hmm. and their guests. Okay. The people that they feel good around. The people they know. And I was like, it. it is a sad fact. Unfortunately, Melissa and Joey haven't made things better mm -hmm. to a point where you could look past the bullshit and be like, hey, I know we're not getting along great, but we'd love you there. That's not how it's going to work. But uh, when mm -hmm. Teresa said, like, they were just involving people that, like, championed the two of them. Mm-hmm. My brain just went, oh, well, no shit, you're not inviting them. I wouldn't either. <laughs> right. Just say that. Like, sorry, you've had a problem with being Louie. We don't feel comfortable with you there, but it's not like we wouldn't have you there if circumstances were different. Sure, but this is how we want to do it. Great. And also, get real. You're throwing a bitch fit over the fact she didn't invite. She didn't invite my mother. <laughs> you're you're the fucking sister-in-law. Get real. You're lucky you get like brownies every once in a while. Sister-in-law. You know, sister-in-law. You're not a blood relative. You know what you are? You're a relative by like association. <laughs> get a grip. Oh my God. Melissa. Mm. <laughs> I I will be dead honest. From day one, I've never liked Melissa no. or Joey. Their kids are adorable, yeah. and they do raise their kids very well. Yeah. But Melissa and Joey, just like go on X Factor, go on like Who's Line, <laughs> go uh, name that too. Just go on a game show. Like you want fame. Mm -hmm. The other okay, okay, the other thing with the two of them that really pisses me off and mm -hmm. I only noticed this because my best friend does a lot of film acting yeah and I've 
done acting and producing for shows for a long time. Mm -hmm. What turns me off with Melissa and Joey, and it turns me off with anybody on a reality show, Mm -hmm. when they're filming, they're hyper-focused and they're hyper-aware of where the camera is and when the camera's around. And nothing they're really doing is 100% genuine because everything they're doing, their body language and everything they kind of feed they're doing it purposefully to the camera, but not like staring at the camera. Yeah. They know they know to film and do and deliver everything to what's picking them up. And it really irritates me because if you want to be genuine, yeah, if you want to be genuine and really put your life out there, you're not going to instantly be like sucked into the camera and being so f- hyper focused on it. Yeah. That, that drives me. You're in a reality <laughs> show. You're not filming Modern Family season eight. Get real. We're definitely not Modern Family. Ugh. Okay. Can I respond? <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize how much I had to say. No. Wow. No, no, it's good because it's honestly, it, re- it literally, I have, I because I, I, I had a feeling that you were going to say all that because by all looks, you're right. By all appearances, you seem to be. Right, but just let me ask you some couple questions. Okay, go for it. <laughs> Would you ever allow your? All right, so say you say your your sister, your sister, your family member, their enemy wants to sit down with you and your friends and have a powwow and talk about you know they want to reveal something about your sister, And you might not be getting along with your sister and you might not be the one that wants to reveal it, but you're okay with somebody else revealing it on national television. Like, is that something that you would be okay with? Like, what would you say? Because if you want to, we can go back to stripper gate season three, all the way. (laughs) I mean, when that guy comes in, yeah. Hey, Melissa, do you remember (laughs) me? I think I know you. Exactly. She's looking at him like, uh, excuse me? Right. Well, um, I mean, hey, your sister-in-law allowed that to happen, though. Like, and everybody's supposed to be like, okay, Teresa, just because you didn't say it, that's okay. But listen, we'll get over it. We'll move on, her and Joey say. Right? I know I know this is bad. <laughs> but you don't care because she was a stripper. <laughs> well, no. Strip away. Anyone who yeah. shames strippers or sex workers, that's y'all can fuck off. I wish Melissa um, said, yeah, I did it, you know, <laughs> but yeah. If someone came to my blood sister and did that, yeah, I'd have a problem. Right. If if my sister in this scenario now was a lesbian, had a sister-in-law, did it to the sister-in-law, I'd kind of care, but I wouldn't really care. Well, they kind of Because in, I don't know, in my brain. Yeah. And I will always think this. My only family that actually matters yeah. are the four people I'm like bonded to, which is my mom, dad, mm-hmm. four people. Oh my God, I'm bonded to myself. Well, I am. Okay. Yeah, so me, <laughs> me, my mom, my dad, and my sister. Okay. Well, there's Joey. That's it. But Joey's your brother. You know what I mean? Joey's her brother. So, okay, you're going to allow my, my wife to be drug on television and then also on a reality show that's going to actually be questioned now for the rest of her life, which is. I am because I see, as Teresa, yeah. I see the trauma and the pain and the disappointment in my children. And if someone can cause my children yeah. to feel this way, I don't care how they feel. Okay. Head out this one. Okay. Um, let's see. Would you allow people, or say there's a family, you have family secrets, say that's a family secret, but then there's another family secret. Just oh, say you have family, family, family secrets. The last mf that should be revealing it is your sibling. Like, say she was a stripper. Say she's a cheater. Say she did hook up with that guy, Nick, whoever the heck his name is. And uh-huh. somebody named Laura Lee Jensen, some loser, decides she's going to go against her best friend, Marge, who we should probably get into those guys soon. Marge, I'm going <laughs> to... You got this best friend of yours, right? This 46 years best friend of Marge's, who's a cast member, you know, She's going to come and say, hey, I know all Marge's secrets. And guess what? Your sister, your sister all cheated on your brother. Some uh, have a time ago. And I'm going to reveal. Is that okay? Teresa's like, sure. Go ahead. I didn't say it. 
just like stripper gate. I didn't say it. I just knew it was going to happen. Didn't do anything about it. And then it happens. And you're like, Jesus Christ. Like, did you not learn anything, Teresa, from like way back when, 13 years ago, when we said, okay, let's move on. Then this is my thing. Teresa has done for, okay, say, say all <laughs> toxic AF up until the wedding. I'm talking Louie's wedding, right? She still was willing to have her brother in that wedding. She cried. You saw the look on her face when she's crying. I just want brother peace. I just want peace. And that fucking guy goes, I'm not going to share air, water, or camera flash with Joe fucking Gorga. And it's like Louie. And she's like, babe, relax, babe, relax. And you see her get scared. And she's like, all of a sudden now, she doesn't want him at the wedding. She just wanted peace a minute ago. I want peace. I want my brother at my wedding crying, trying to get a hold of Joey, trying to get a hold of Joey. And then you got Louie all of a sudden. Dude, you just fucking got here. What are you so mad about? First so, of all, so mad about. I, I, I forgive him. Why not? Definitely him? can see. Okay, there's a few things there to address. Okay. Families, fa these fam, these families that are so close with each other, these families, and they have all these Family. secrets. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off with your secrets, really. You're close and you have secrets. That's bullshit. So you're, why you do you have, your why family do you have secrets? So, do your family, so, you know, even if there was or wasn't, say there is or isn't. I'm just saying, you know, me Maybe and. Me and my close family, we're not a secret family. We're not a secret family. We never have been. Okay. Grow the fuck up and just tell people stuff. That's how I feel. Okay. So like Teresa telling people to air it. Great. Air it. Like okay. get a grip on reality and just face what the truth is. Like deal with it that way. Okay. Can everybody handle it better? Absolutely. But yeah. are any of them going to? <laughs> No. no, um, no, it's no, not as me. far as Louie goes. I, I kind of teetered on a line of being uncomfortable and not liking what was happening to also respecting and understanding where Louie was coming from, yeah, mostly because when I watch the show, I'm kind of watching it through a lens of relating to everybody, yeah. Um, and this goes to my whole thing of Teresa's not really ever, ever. Wow, what kind of an accent was that? What was that? I don't know. Teresa has never. Um, <laughs> she's never really had anyone in her corner before. And especially now that her parents yeah. are gone, that's something very important to her. Even though Louis does get very passionate with a lot of things he says and a lot of things he does, <laughs> I did appreciate how bothered and how upset he was getting on behalf of the woman he cares for. <laughs> and especially on a show like this, where they really just love showing this toxic masculinity and this like macho bro stuff mm -hmm. with Louie, he does get that way. But at the same time, he really gets passionate for the people he cares about. Oh, yeah, real passionate. And that's not that's not something that's familiar yeah. for an audience. It's not something people are used to seeing. And I've seen stuff like that. So when I recognize that in him, I'm like, okay, <clears throat> he's a little. He crosses the line a lot, but when he gets like that, and he's yeah. more upset than the person it involves, meaning Teresa. Yeah, I understand the emotion behind it and how it's like, if you don't understand how you have to care for yourself, I don't want to be the one to do it, but I'm going to do it. But now I'm going to tell you why this is terrible. Like, she did, yeah. Yeah. So I appreciate that she has him for that. Yeah. Okay. Now say all that. Okay. I'll, I'll even give her all of that. Right. Even though I don't agree with all of it, but Say now, right? So now we're going into season 14 and people have been saying, suspecting for a long time that Louie was paying content creators to drag the cast, to drag cast members, to drag everybody on the cast. He actually even said it at one point and then he took it back. Come to find out now, 
that all these um, people are snitching on each other and showing receipts on Instagram and X, and Twitter X, whatever, with my mistake, went on to listen to this podcast yesterday. <laughs> they're showing proof that Jennifer Eden and Teresa have been, and what's the worst part about it is that Jim, the lawyer, they're not mentioning Louie. So, like, like I said earlier, I heard Louie was trying to get rid of Jim and I didn't know why. I thought that was a huge mistake. Now I'm mm. thinking he might be right. You might be right. Louie might actually be going damn dude like you have really been paying you actually you have been getting my wife to pay these content creators you two have been going because they're literally saying like these three-way calls with Teresa, jennifer aiden jim the lawyer and like all about the truth podcast and like the people in melissa's camp that have now or i'm sorry Teresa's camp that have now um that now they now turned on Teresa. but before they're like yeah we did all the dirty work we're the ones that did it here's the receipts they're, here's Teresa asking us here's jennifer aiden asking us jennifer sending out screeners Basically, Strict is going to get Jennifer Aiden fired. But this is the thing. Teresa now is showing, and it's proof now, that she has been trying to destroy her brother, his name, his reputation, it, it, four storylines, John Food is the same thing. Whether you're digging up old shit or not, the bottom line is, Teresa, you're the fucking felon on paper, you're the fucking liar on paper, and you're the one who fucking went to prison. And all these people, we all might have fucked up and... You know, did drugs back in our past, and you might think pulling Brittany out of the woodwork, John Food is ex-wife, and you think, oh, getting her to say John's likes it in the butt or whatever the heck he is. Like, who the fuck cares? He's married. I like her- it in the butt. It's I very- know. Like, she like literally thought that like, this was something bad like, about him, and like you know, because he's married to Rachel, whatever. You know, Brittany comes out and says these weird things. Guess what? She gets ended up getting sent back to prison for violating her iPad, which I don't know. I got you can violate your iPad, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. But like they try to blame John for I mean, it. if you try hard enough, you can violate anything. Oh, I mean, <laughs> my TV, my TV is looking pretty sexy right now. <laughs> I know. No, I'm kidding. My ring light looks pretty sexy in the room. You know what I mean? Mm, look like, at those bed sheets. <laughs> right? Like she's like, I violated my iPad. I was like, that sounds so strange. But okay. But like, ah. no, they literally blame John for it. They destroyed him on Twitter. But like the bottom line is. I could have, everybody had moved past. Okay, people were saying at the end of season 13, there's no way to come back from this. Teresa and Joey are done. They're never going to speak again. But again, why is it always on Joe and Melissa to make it better? They've been trying to make it better from day one. But how can you make it better when you first you find out we can go back to what we can blame Louie. I, I was trying to blame Louie, trying to blame Louie, trying to blame Louie for influencing Teresa. But when it comes down to being Teresa and her lawyer have been doing this, and I don't know if Louie was in the background being Mr. Puppet Masters, maybe not getting his hands dirty. I don't know. But how dumb of Teresa and, and Jennifer to put things in messaging and to like have things recorded and like not think that one day the snitches you hired are then not going to snitch on you. When you hire a rat, you get a rat. A rat is a rat is a rat. So these bitches on Toxic, who have been literally, like, literally slut-shaming me, Krista Marie, calling me fat and ugly, which I'm not fat or ugly. (laughs) Have you seen me? I mean, like, come on, just saying. You bitches show your faces. You got people, you got, you're calling people fat and ugly. Like, they're literally, you've seen how toxic. You only got to see a clip of what goes on on between these two camps, we'll say, Teresa and Borgas. It's disgusting. I got death threats over Salt Lake City opinions. Like, I'm it's crazy. But guess what? You also found out what happened on your franchise. They were getting paid. People were getting paid or not paid or what do we call it? Vontees. Can we call it the same thing? I don't really call it the same thing. Do you? Well, okay. Here's the thing. Like with with Salt. Good. We're gonna call Heather Teresa. Heather's the Teresa. (laughs) With Salt Lake, I think. Here, the difference is the fact Salt Lake, the women are just, they're only concerned with themselves and their appearance and like them, them, them. Yeah. Whereas on New Jersey, it it's more elevated because I really do feel genuinely all these women want to coexist with one another. Like they want things to be fine. But at the same time, they're all so dead set on getting their point across that instead of focusing on what can we do to make this work they're focusing on look at me here's why i'm right listen to me now yeah true which is sad because it's like at one point or another they all make good points but none of them listen to each other that's true 
That's true. I mean, poor Monica at the end of your Salt Lake death finale, that poor girl tried to speak, but she couldn't even say what she wanted to say. So like, that's the thing. We're going to watch a season of Jersey where now we know that they've created horrible storylines against each other, toxic storylines, and it's like not real now. It's like hard to watch, be real about it because it's yeah. like, because even with, with Jersey, this is real life. Like a lot of these franchises, they're not friends off the shows. And that's why it never works. Because they're castmates. Yes. That's it. That's it. I've tried I've tried explaining this to people. It's like whenever I'm in a show, yeah. It would be like while you're on that show, right. During the whole process, you're being filmed with the people you're around. You don't like everyone you're in a show with. No, and it's not normal to just make up the way they want you to. Right? No. You won't do that in real life. No. But like, if you actually filmed the show with people's friends groups, it would be so boring. I don't know that, though. Think about it. Miami no, it is good to watch. Don't you think Miami's good? Do you watch Miami? Yeah, I love Miami. Because you know why you love it? Because they like each other. They still they still love each other. They still hang out off the show. They're still castmates, though. It's, it's not. The, not it's, yeah, they don't have. It's, to it's different <laughs> than if someone just came to me and my friend group and we're like, "Hey, we're gonna film you guys and make a show about it." It you know would, be, would be boring. You no, know it would be great if Jersey could do that. If they could put the goddamn swords down when the filming goes down. And just fucking love each other in between and not fucking pay content creators to drag each other in between seasons. That would be wonderful. But unfortunately, they don't do that. And what we're finding out now is that, like, they were, this is what I don't get, Dallin. I don't understand why. Why do you have to have a problem with every single person? Do you have to have a storyline, Teresa? Because you're fine. Like I said, you are the queen of probably the entire Housewives franchise as a whole. You've been there since day one. Jersey was maybe the second or third franchise to come out. You've been the queen for day one. Nobody was coming for your seat. Your brother was never coming for your seat. Nobody on the cast was ever coming for your seat. I don't know who put that in your fucking head, but nobody was ever doing that. Everybody wanted to just love you. And to get to your point about Louis, they did accept him in day one. They The only thing that Marge said was, let him talk about it because because it was coming out. It was all over social media. And I agree with you. I said, there's digital proof of me saying I'm on Team Teresa for this one because of who's starting you on. I said, when somebody tells you to shut the fuck up, March, you shut the fuck up around here. Or I would have punched you in the fucking face. If I were Teresa, I would have fucked you up if you didn't stop talking about my goddamn boyfriend. And Marge wouldn't shut the fuck up. So I agree. But we got past it all. We got past all of that. Joe and Melissa also, before that season... Pizzagate had already happened, but they weren't allowed to talk about it. Actually, wait, no, I'm sorry. We meet Louie. We try to get along with him. Marge, don't shut the fuck up. We go through a season. Teresa's angry at Marge because now she blames the entire toxicity on Marge creating this rumor about him being on a beach. No, it was already out there. Whatever. We have Vanessa coming out of the woodwork. <sighs> He's married. He's engaged to get married January 2020. His runaway bride, Vanessa, runs away. Good for her. By mid-2022, he's married mm -hmm. Teresa. What I think he does is he sees a vulnerable woman who just lost both her parents, unfortunately. Her husband, who ex-husband now is getting, getting deported after he just spent five years in prison. You, By all appearances, her and Joey and Melissa were fine. You said you saw them on Ultimate Girls Trip. Her and Melissa were fine. She got a little upset in season eight before Nono died, their parents. And I believe her misplaced anger with Joey comes really from that. Him not spending enough time with no, no, the father before he passes away because they'd already lost the mom. Teresa spent a year in prison because of her ex-husband away from her mother. Her mother passes away. That's awful. Her, her father now is here. Joey, please spend time with dad. Please spend time with dad. He's sick. He's sick. He's sick. He misses mom. Joey's busy. He's got a family. He sees she sees that as a, a betrayal, disloyalty. No, no dies. And yeah, she's angry. I get it. OK, she has this misplaced anger. But then what does this asshole do? He comes in and he sees a, a, bent, a bunch of bench relationships in her life and breaks them severely. But come to find out, she, oh, behind the scenes, has been fucking her castmates up the asshole with no lube for fucking years. She And, and I don't know, I don't know how far back the stuff with Jennifer Aiden goes with, I don't know if she was doing this before Louie came along. I don't know if Jim was always doing this. I have yet to get into the Twitter receipts. I just know when I looked at it, I said, oh my God, oh my God. Like, 
Teresa, I was so angry yesterday. I said, I have tried to literally see this as Louie is the problem. Not you, Teresa, that you want to be friends with these people. You would be, it would be much easier on her and everybody else if they all got along. But guess what? They've all tried to get along with her. She made it very fucking clear. She wants nothing to do with anybody, but doesn't have a reason why. You tell me why she's so mad at Joey. Why is she so angry at her brother? She wanted him in the wedding. She she hugged Melissa before the wedding, hugged them. We hugged, we went, oh, let's draw this thing on the wall, showing our family. And no, yes, hug, 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 kiss, kiss. Fake it. I don't give a fuck. Fake the funk. Fake that you love each other. You did it every fucking season. Every season, we were able to refilm and be fine. Everybody hugged and, you know, you could fucking sprinkle cookies here. By the way, you're getting sprinkle cookies for Christmas, in case you didn't know. These sprinkle cookies you will be getting for Christmas, okay? Wait, you know what's so funny about... <laughs> We had some we had some sprinkle cookies in the kitchen and my mom's like, oh my gosh, Dallin, try these. They're so good. I took a bite and threw the rest of the cookie away and I was like, this is the most disgusting cookie I've ever had. I'm going to send you both and I'm going to see if you know the difference <laughs> between the sprinkle cookies from the shop, right, that she brought them from or the, I forget, I'll have to find the, the bakery that Teresa says it, but like, oh wait, can we talk about <laughs> Caroline Manzo too before? <laughs> Nah, fuck her. She deserves no. none of my breath. No. She is who they or they who the Sopranos basically were like made from her and her husband. It's Hate her. I know. She Caroline Manzo deserves the, the yeah. worst life for the rest of her existence. I She's hate the that reason woman. we'll never see that ultimate girls trip Morocco. She is the reason. And you know what? Can't, it, can't even blame it on Brandy. Caroline, Caroline Manzo. I'm going to say this directly to her. Yes. You know what, Caroline Manzo? Yes. If you or your little cronies listen, fine. Oh, no. Take a hit out on me. You oh. know what? If I die, I know it's because of you. So go at it. Go I'm at it. The Jersey Shore, by the way. Um. Go at it, sweetie. <laughs> you look. Caroline okay, Manzo. I, I'm confused. She's diapers somewhere like i am confused by her like i just never thought that she was that afraid of her family her husband or like she would one go against dina write a letter in support of somebody that tried to murder her sister twice on a life not alleged in the in court filing he just got he just got off on the charges see this is the thing about jersey we oh, have really? Louis, who just was in court with his ex fiance vanessa who he was engaged to in 2020, who he hired a fake patient in 2022 after he's married to Teresa to go into her fucking work and act as a patient with a fake name and everything. Oh, you were a mother than a narcissist. Now you're a therapist. Oh, did you ever get back with Louie? Blah, 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 blah. Now I can't pay. Now I find out who you're a fake person. Then we find out you're hired by Bo Deedle. Then we find out that you literally <laughs> and on behalf of Louie. And then Teresa's like, oh, it's okay. Teresa, why is it okay for him to stalk his ex-fiance when he's supposedly in love with you? Or did he fuck with you to get back at her and make sure it was in the public eye because that's what a narcissist does? I don't know. I'm just saying. It's one or the other. <laughs> like, think of, it, think of it. Either way, it's bad. Either way, how do you excuse that? But I'm not even mad at Louie anymore because now I see that she's just as dirty as him. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Like, I know we disagree. That's the best part about this because our viewers, our listeners are not going to be, oh my God, they're only team this one or team that one because it's so much deeper now because now we got like we got to start after this week we're gonna have to get into the jenna braden of it all the margaret of it all the dolores of it all how could you be thinking dolores is boring by the way do you not think her and frank's relationship is fucking the best and watching them navigate uh, <laughs> i love it i love it okay I love because it. you asked okay mm -hmm. i did frank no i, I love him no i, I love you Liter <laughs> Frank needs to grow the fuck up. Oh, you are no longer married to this woman. No, First off, leave her alone. She does. Okay. Do your thing. Cope. First of all, he acts like these kids are like toddlers. <laughs> fuck off. Get a grip. You've got a girlfriend. Go live your life. Stop okay. being so emotionally attached to your like. Yeah. It's, it's honestly, it's embarrassing to watch. No, I, I was embarrassed. Um, Dolores, though, like oh, she's so cute. Holy crap, she's a sleeping pill. What do you mean? You don't think that that whole dynamic is fucking fantabulous? 
There is nothing about Dolores that belongs on reality television. Not even as Teresa's loyalist friend, most loyalist friend, if that's a word. Loyalty. She's friend. so. Somebody's got to be friends with Teresa. Boring. Trina. Like, oh my gosh, for a minute, for a minute, I thought there might be hope. And she's like, we're going to Ireland. <laughs> they talk about this castle. I'm like, first off, oh, no. not only how are you the designated host of the trip, but you're the worst host ever. Nothing is happening. You're not contributing anything. You're <laughs> so boring. You're, I just, no, there's nothing about her. Like, when I think of Dolores now, all I all I can hear are one of two things. Uh, no. I just hear Frank, <laughs> leave me alone, and then I hear Paul. Your house is too hot. Like that's it. That's all I think of Dolores. I hear Dolor, Dolor. It's Frank, Dolor. It's like what? Although <laughs> I don't despise her. There is one person on this show no. I cannot stand no. at all. I know it. Go ahead. They need to go. I don't understand those of you that like her. Margaret is the worst human being on the planet. She's she's fake. What? She's an absolute. Let uh, forgive me, but don't forgive me because I don't care. Like Dolores says in the little trailer, and yeah, she calls her a fucking cunt. No, yeah, I don't know what that's about. Honestly, Margaret is the worst he, all season all last season long she complains about people and she complains about this she complains about that she's the fucking cause about 80 percent of this bullshit and it's like you know what woman if you were so happy in your marriage you wouldn't be causing all those problems so what's really going on with you and your so-called husband who's apparently loving you so much that you can't stay out of other people's business who's he fucking i don't know I mean, Margaret, little Mar Margaret, little, little, oh my gosh. And I don't understand how, how she just doesn't get the fact. Margaret, no one's denying that Jennifer's husband cheated right. on her. No right. one's denying it. Hey, you dumb, vapid little bitch. Guess what? You don't have a family that's super young so when someone says it and someone calls you out for being a cheater and saying and doing besides yeah. i'll be honest she seems proud about it and it's weird it's weird, weird. i know i why why would you be proud margaret get a grip on reality but then you bring that out about jennifer she has fucking young kids and the way that jennifer's youngest daughter has been affected by that it just fills me with so much rage when i see margaret that i cannot believe anyone supports that woman she is vile she's disgusting like you actually altered the brain chemistry of a child you altered the brain chemistry of a child because you brought something to light. And it's like, that is no better than what Joe and Melissa did to Gia and those girls when they were little. And that's why I hate those two. You altered the brain chemistry of a child who's now so traumatized that that is something they are hyper fixating on. And you can't fix that now because it's out there. It's like, you know what? Fuck you. That's why you and Melissa are such good pals. <laughs> Ugh. At least, it, yeah, but see, like Jennifer's daughter at least wants to be a doctor. Like she's mad at her daughter for wanting to be a doctor. Like you could thank Marge for her. I know you're upset, but like you could thank Marge though. Like her daughter wants to be a doctor. Like I don't think it's a bad thing that her daughter. Like I don't think her daughter's seeing it as a bad thing. I really believe that it would have came out eventually because on that show, like whether now see, I don't agree with you. I agree with Marge should have never brought it up. She's was, not saying a doctor though. She's not saying a doctor. She the doctor. the child is being very specific. She said, yeah. I want to be a, a a couple's therapist. I want yeah. to help people who are yeah. falling out of love because yeah. that's not a kid just saying they want to be a doctor. There's a reason she's saying it. It's that dumb little blonde Barbie bimbo bitch, Margaret. Yeah. Did you see like when she like when she went with her ponytails, her pigtails and then like her like, ugh, I don't know. I, I don't dislike Marge. I just I realize now that like the things that they do to her, it, like I, I wish Tracy just wouldn't have her face being friends with her again because it's like not you can't 
they're never going to be friends. Like Marge, she's never going to forgive Marge. Like I don't, she doesn't yeah. care. Everyone wants to make like Teresa or Melissa the villain. No, I'm sorry. Marge is the actual real life villain. She's a piece of shit. And I hope she listens to this. Hi, Marge. My <laughs> name's Dallin. I don't like you because you're a terrible woman. And I bet you yell at service workers. Um, she, she got caught saying something off. She was, she did a, a hot mic moment and didn't realize she was mic'd. I'll tell you about oh, See, see, I didn't even know that. She yeah. just exudes such a bitchy energy that I just knew. And it was about like one of the uh, camera people. She said something about him maybe not being all mentally yet, like not mentally able, basically. Fuck off, Marge. Right. And and they're like, oh my god. And then she tried to say I I did it. It was an AI. That's my me- that's my message to her. Everybody, anybody, feel free to send it to her. Hey Marge, fuck off. Well, hopefully, like when we tag, I'll tag food and all them, they'll get to they'll eventually they'll hear this. I they'll all hear these episodes, so that's awesome. Because honestly, like like as podcasters or like we're not real journalists we just play them on tv and just saying like we literally we're being fair like i feel like we're giving our both we're giving our honest opinion like and we're giving our like our emotional opinion because like it is real this is real life and And if you didn't want it you wouldn't sign up to be a part of the show right and listen people don't go to cnn or like abc news or fox news to find out what's going on with the housewives they go to podcasters they go to social media we matter we're important our voice matters we keep them relevant between seasons correct we just don't have to make it toxic relevancy you know yep so i think we did a pretty good job of like a pretty pre-gaming this (laughs) yeah So before I want I want to give my opinion on everybody real quick. Go ahead. As you can all tell, I love Teresa. Mm-hmm. I just I feel like I relate to her a lot. <clears throat> yeah. Um Dolores, boring. Oh. I don't hate her. She's just uh, she's boring for the show. What about Polly? I forgot uh... him already. <laughs> We've not seen him enough for me to form an opinion. Okay. Um, Margaret, we if you weren't paying attention just now, what were you doing? Right. Um Rachel, I like I like Rachel. Mm-hmm. I'm still I don't have an opinion on her husband. I like her. I like her kids. I, Rachel and Danielle's kids. Yeah. I love both of their kids. Danielle has the cutest kids on the planet. Agreed. I love Danielle. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know we didn't talk to her at all, but I feel like in that group, if I were a person, right, I'm yeah. her. Really? Oh, I would love you. I would love it. I'm. Da- I am Danielle. Okay. Um, I love that. Let's see. Who am I forgetting? I know. So easily forgettable. So easily forgettable. Who am I forgetting? See? Jackie Judas. Jackie Judas. Gold Slater. Uh, Jackie can fuck off. She's a piece Sorry. of shit. I don't care yeah. about her. Yeah, me neither. Fuck off, Jackie. No, there's someone else. There's someone else. Oh, my God. Who is? Wait. Melissa. <laughs> oh, well, that's fitting. She's a tryhard anyway. <laughs> eh, fuck <laughs> Melissa. Sorry. Fuck Melissa and fuck her husband. And Jen Fessler. Which I don't think she's not in any of the um, I okay, it's weird because like I don't like Jen Fessler, but I do yeah. like Jen Fessler, if that makes any sense. So she yeah, like, because I think she plays both sides of the fence right now. So it's like she she's, plays the side. she's so she's such a boring, weird fit for that group of women, but yeah. she's so necessary. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> she's randomly she necessary. Like I can't it's like <laughs> With Jen, I feel like she's trying to be the Dina from Beverly Hills or, or Dina. Oh my gosh. She, never mind. Uh, when she's like, see these, see these? 25,000. 25. Dana. Like, Dana, yeah. I feel like she's trying to be her. And I'm like, Jen, it's not working. Yeah. Fetch You'll not. never be Dana. Yeah. Never. <laughs> Fetch is not happening. Just like no one will. No one will ever be Dana. No one Dana's ever. too good. I love you, Dana. Dana needs her own reality show because I watch it thank you. every day, every week. 
she all the time. Told you. She would love like, you say that. Just just film her sitting on her couch <laughs> eating chips and I'll watch it. And like giving commentary because she knows freaking everything about everything. Like, <laughs> Like, I want her looking out the window, even like, look at that fucking bird. Do you know that that bird went to Target yesterday and was stooped out on their yeah, roof? Yeah. And it was shitting on everyone. I've got the receipts. Right. Look, I've yeah. actually got this video. Look at this. Right. Look at this bird. But I talked to the bird's friend and like, here's the real shit. Like, and it, we have all the receipts with their $25,000 sunglasses. Uh, she, isn't she? I told you. Told you, she's awesome. But amazing. So wait, wait. So we have that's it. I mean, so I mean, there is a new. There's somebody new. I don't. I heard. Is there another new person? Like, how do I not know this? I don't think there's a new person with Jersey, but we did good for a long time with no new. Yeah. And then Jackie came along, and she barely fit. She's barely fitting now. She went had to be friends with Teresa just to, I, for what I don't fucking know. But do you know right now that Jennifer Aiden is friends with Melissa again? Gorga. Listen. Did that not pierce your heart right now. Listen. I we all make mistakes. <laughs> well, I Jennifer, get it. She's gonna get fired. I don't know. Do you get fired for sending? I don't know. You you might know. Like I know you could get fired for sending screeners to people. Like, I think you signed a release or something. That's the thing. Like I don't know. Like, if they're gonna listen, you're gonna fire Monica for being a part of Vontis. That's like that broke my heart. I didn't sleep for three freaking days. Remember, we were like <laughs> losing our mind for three days after the fact that they kept Heather. This Those women in Salt Lake, when you like look Ugh. at other stuff like uh, this, yeah. Potomac, Miami, these women in Salt Lake are so fucking fragile. It's Ugh. embarrassing. It's, it's embarrassing. It is like, I was like, what the fuck am I watching? And how did I not say we Dana told us, Dana told us, and me and you were like, season to season! What the fuck are you doing, Bravo? Why are you lying? You knew about Vontis. You knew, you knew, you knew. Poor Monica. Poor Monica. The best I had a theory the other day. Well, I knew why. why? Because, like, we talked um, about it all. Well, no, it's actually... I, I'm i giving the producers a lot of credit here. Why? Because I'm trying to make it make sense. So It'll never. Fuck you, Lord. Season four was great. We all know that. But Okay, that was a Jen it, Shaw one, right? It, Went away. It okay. was... No, season four was with Monica. Okay. But okay. even yeah. though Jen, even though Jen Shaw was gone, it was very Jen Shaw centric. Well, that's not Monica's fault. But I think, I and I'm judging this on with what they went <sighs> with, and I feel like you they're try. possibly trying to get Jen out of the picture and mm-hmm. Jen out of the story. Mm-hmm. And since Monica even said like it's a it's a buy for now, not buy forever, right? Kind of thing. Potentially set her up to bring her back on to be the show villain instead of having Jen Shaw back. So like, give her a season or two where she's away, right? Establish nope. establish a new kind of vibe <laughs> with it. Get the memory of Jen Shaw gone, right? And then bring monica because monica can come back because she also has other friends that have connections to some of the housewives on it now so it's like it's something that would organically fit she fit organically anyway because she came with her own bag of shit she didn't have to create bags of shit with other stories like you know what i mean they didn't have to do what they did but it she came under the caveat of jen shock so if you this get is- the jen if you get the jen I out of it am then really it can just be shot. something more yeah I hate, by the way, guys, I am a salt lake. I hate Jen Shaw. I have videos of me screaming at this woman, like, you are a loser, piece of shit. And I made Monica the victim, and she did not follow my goddamn lead. And if she would have followed my lead, we would have been okay, because she was the victim of Jen Shaw and Heather. And Heather knew about Vontis, and Heather had the hairdresser. And Heather, like, it just made me, like, we, we were traumatized, yeah. traumatized, extremely traumatized by the fact that they tried to lie, and Bravo lied about saying that they didn't know about Vontis when they fucking did. You gonna ignore a legal letter? Go ahead, ignore a legal letter, and then try to sell it on us that you didn't know about it. 
when Heather fucking knew, and then said, receipts, timelines, like, you know, you inbred bitch. Like, that's some inbred thing. Uh, we thought we were going to believe you. But yeah. Speaking but, of Bravo lying. Right. What can, else I, can I just mention Go ahead. how angry, how angry I am that they let Brandy Glanville suffer for as long as she did before they made a statement? I know. I know. Holy crap. I know. I know. And you know when, what? Oh. You know what else Bravo did? Because now they're, they have balls to do that to Brandy. Like they literally filmed Ultimate Girls Trip with the Rooney people and they showed Sonia's naked body so many times. It's disturbing that Bravo cameras laid on her like that. They laid on her naked body when she was getting naked. She was clearly not stable mentally or able to be, drink or anything, yeah. Sonia. They, the Bravo cameras and these producers are fo- focused on her naked body. Like, like, uh-huh. what the hell is that? I kept saying, this is weird, guys. It's like, cut it out. This cut the scenes out. Get her help. Why are Bravo cameras focusing on her swimming in a pool with her, like, literally fucking naked? And then, like, yeah. literally sit on the shit with Brandy and make it seem like she's like, you know, Brandy screaming like this is happening. This is happening. And then, again, nobody was denying what happened with Caroline. She wasn't denying it. She's just saying, you guys are pushing me to do this. Well, guess what? Now I believe her. I believe a lot of things. Like. And I think Bravo has a lot of fucking issues with their showrunners getting involved, which I never knew what a showrunner was. I just, I heard the term. <laughs> I didn't realize yeah. the producer that creates storylines, or I don't know, maybe they go back and forth, right? Well, whatever they did, Lori, whatever the fuck your name is, that fucked with Salt Lake. And I find out you're the same one with Jersey. It's like, it's like, then it's not real to watch to me. Because if I like, literally him halfway through Salt Lake, I'm like, wait a minute. Dana said it. They're going to try to use Von Teese as a storyline, but we already know who it is and blah, 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 blah. Like, no, that's not really going to happen. There's no way they're going to go against Von. Like, it's like, wow. Okay. Like, yeah. if I was like traumatized with them, um, how can we watch it now? Knowing that they kept Heather, knowing she protected Jen Shaw. One more point about that, this black eye thing that she joked around about for two years, made it seem like it was a joke, alluding to Jen doing it, alluding to Jen doing it, joking about it. Okay, well, if you were so scared of Jen Shah, so afraid that you didn't had to protect her, then you should have just said from day one that you got hit in the head with a door and fucking called it a day and never said a fucking word about it. And nobody would have questioned you, stupid black guy, for two years while you kept joking. Maybe you did it. Maybe the producer did it. Maybe you did it. Oh, like you were not afraid of Jen Shah, you fucking liar. Either you're so inbred stupid that you were listening to the showrunners and you really thought we were that dumb that we were going to believe you. Like, yeah, you made up this thing at the end because it suited her. It suited her need to make Monica look like, oh, we can't protect people anymore because look what I did. I protected Jen. No, you didn't. You alluded to her doing it for two years. To me, I don't need you to protect me. If that's how you protect me, I don't need your protection because <laughs> I can't wait for Jen Shaw to get out and really fucking punch you in the eye. I can't wait for that day. <laughs> Both eyes. Seriously, like, you bitch. Like, you you know I'm on parole probation, whatever the fuck I'm on. Some kind of shit. And you're going to literally tell them I committed a violent act out on bail. Like, and then say you tried to protect me. How? You alluded me to doing it for two years. <laughs> like, the fact point. that the like, fact that no one understands that if someone was actually scared of someone, you right. wouldn't wait until they're in prison to say that. What, like, you'd you say that you'd say that when they were out to right. make their punishment more harsh. Or you like, would say it when they're put away to be like, I'm so afraid. No, you're not afraid because what you did was low and dirty and now they're going to be extra mad at you. If you were so, afraid, you just said you hit it on the door and called it a day. You would have just never said anything. You would have said, oh, I hit it on the door last night. You would have protected her for real and never said a word about Jen Shaw. Oh, I was drunk and I, had, I was drinking for 24 hours straight, Heather. And I hit it on the door because even if you were that drunk, but listen, remember they would, she starts drinking at five in the morning. She didn't stop till five the next morning. And that goes on yeah. and on every day. So yeah, like you literally lied Heather for a very long time you, on Hope my girls trip and on the seasons, you tried to say, Oh, well, the producers did it. Maybe Whitney did it. Maybe this, like you really made everybody, but Jen Shaw. And then, then you wait till she's away and go, I don't know. She might've, she might've not. But then you say you're afraid of her. You should just say that. And I, I know everyone says like, oh, I believe her now. I believe her. <laughs> they believe her because they want to believe Jen punched her. I believe. And you wanted to believe it. I, I believe that Heather had some work done at her place that Thank got you. botched and it bruised her. Yep. And she can't say that, especially after Monica is like, oh, I got what some services got? done that botched. 
Sorry, Heather, you got botched. And I have a picture of me after Botox. I got a sty in my eye for wearing makeup the next day. And my yeah. mom's face swelled up just like hers. And I'm going to have to send you a picture. If you put it side by side, my face looks awful. It looks like I got yeah. punched, but it doesn't look like a black eye. It looks like a swollen eye from like a bee sting or like a right. eye in your eye that you don't think. That's what happened to her. It's not a black well, eye, it's black and blue. I and enough people at this point have posted the pictures <laughs> from that trip where like a day and two before she already had something starting Thank on you. her eye. Thank so you. it's like she didn't it's punch you. She made she created so, a whole game around it and then tried to make like she was traumatized and just see all those bitches. Oh my god, Heather. Oh, 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 oh Heather. Oh, I understand now. But it's like fuck Monica though, right? Like Monica's the one who tried to expose the criminal. She protects them and you're all hugging her at the reunion. Make it make sense. Stupid. It's, a, it's dumb it's dumb well i'm excited me too. to watch the preview the premiere tomorrow may 5th may 5th sunday and it's on a sunday night and i guess we'll have this released well on saturdays or sundays you guys you'll be getting a new episode every week we're not going to edit it so this is you hear what you heard is what you got <laughs> what you heard is yeah. what you got Waking up in the morning, thinking about so many things. I just want things to get better. Oh. I wish I wish I knew the whole song. I know I'm gonna have to. I have it, but I realized I took this whole week. It was a learning process, but this is cool. I hope this sounds okay. So you're gonna you send me a, like a, just a video copy, like you did through the um when you texted me the one, right? Yes. yes. Okay. All right, guys. Well. But hear me talking like we already hung up. But guys, you know where to find our both of our podcasts <laughs> are on Spotify, Apple, iHeart, right? All that stuff, right? Yes. Yes. And our links, I'm sure we'll link them all in our sides of that. Please, please five star review us on our podcast, please. Even if you don't like us, you can send us a review. We will customize, we will take criticism into you know consideration. If you give any of us lower than a five star review, I will use a freaking Ouija board and send <laughs> demons to your home. So keep, get get your shit in check. Five We're star really, only. And we don't I, you. like our podcasts <laughs> are free, guys. We're not asking for money, right? Like, I'm not, you know, like listen like we're honest we're not we're not saying one side's better than the other. We're just giving our um, our perspective perspectives. And everybody just, as long as you realize in the end that we're always right, that's okay. It's all right. No. But I um, mean, I'm only right, but whatever. I mean, we'll see. I mean, you're at the Jersey Shore. I mean, it's like very hot out this week. So it's going to be hot tomorrow. Just prepare. Everybody wear their sunscreen and uh, we'll see. You I live in a desert. Oh my God, that's <laughs> right. So much. It's, you know what? We have really bad heat here. We have like humid heat. Do you have dry heat there? Yeah, you know what dry heat does to you? No. I've never had I've not leave Jersey. I have never left Jersey Shore. I hate to say it. Like, it's so bad. Listen, <laughs> the thing I hate about humidity is it affects my asthma. Oh no. But compared to dry heat, it's fine. Think think of dry heat and think of the word dry. Yeah. And think of dry. And it then dry, mm -hmm. it dries you out. It dries you up. Mm. So like the inside of my nose always has sores because it's dry. dry my skin's heat. always dry. My lips are always chapped and cracking and bleeding because they're oh. dry. We're basically snakes. Oh, no. Ugh. I would not. Yeah. I mean, I would want to come to the West Coast. I think you're in the West Coast. I don't know. I get my time zones all messed up. What do y'all prefer? Do you all prefer humid heat or dry heat? You tell us. <laughs> tell us. Because <clears throat> honestly... I just like heat in general. I the don't. Cold, the cold can fuck like, off. Yeah, the cold can really fuck the fuck off. Because when I think anyway. of Salt Lake, I think of mountains and snow. And you have, like, you're in the desert, though. So no, listen. What they do yeah. on the show to us is so unfair. They make, it's me so and unfair. Megan say this all the time. They make Utah look like it's just bitter cold. Yes! And I mean, it they it they looks like a tundra. They give and I'm just like, in my brain, I'm like, Bitch, yeah. it's hot here i'm like no. we get to summers we go through like stretches of like 25 plus days over 100 what i why do they show yeah. mountains and snow all the time like 
Death like if you saw pink. if you saw how green it gets here, and it's probably pretty. I and I've been on the East Coast and I've seen like East Coast trees and all that. Yeah, that's yeah. nothing compares to what the mountains look like here and the oh, greenery sure. and the water and just everything. They do nothing like that. No. When you say Salt Lake City, I think now I think of snow. But when you sit now, when I really think of it, you're right. It is like the Nevada desert. Like, so wait, so where is? Wait, one month confused. Where is that lake? Lake, what is it? The real pretty lake, the blue lake. Is that Nevada? Maybe it's not. Lake Powell? Lake <laughs> no, Tahoe. Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe. Is that near you? Yeah. I want, oh my God. It's not like be- beautiful, like blue water. I've it's seen. It's only like a four hour drive from us. Oh my God. I saw that and I said, I would live there. I would, I love the Jersey Shore. I, I don't ever leave. I staycation here. I'm eight blocks from the water, but I would go and live on Lake Tahoe. I saw that on the Vanderpump Kids and I was like, oh. <gasps> I've never seen it like that. I've never seen a lake that beautiful. Like, oh my God. Is it really that beautiful? Oh yeah. Person? Oh my God. If that's what I you just look like, I'm... I don't know. It's so funny because like yeah. they do. They make Utah look so cold and so <laughs> snowy. They're always in snow boots, heels, literally Jen Shaw. They're going to events in snowstorms. <laughs> Honestly, we hardly get that much snow. That's crazy. We don't get any at all anymore. It's we hardly of- get any snow and yeah, yeah summer summer is just the hiking here Ugh. is unreal yeah. see i do like see i love when it right now like when it when the jersey shore season hits like right about now as long as i've been here 46 years i still get very excited very nostalgic when shirt when the housewives comes on jersey housewives it shows them at the shore because they start filming in like july so yeah. it's very like it's very you have to experience it it's really cool but we're just a very, like, I feel bad because the rest of the world looks at us so hard. Like, Jersey Licia, Jersey Shore, all we do is scream and yell at each other. But, like, literally the next day, we love each other. Even, like, the next five minutes. That's how we But that, that's it. not that's, that's not other. unique to New Jersey. Everyone does that. And people who just peg that on there are stupid and, and like, ignorant. You so mean. You guys are so toxic. You're so violent. It's like, well, I'm sorry that other fucking show. I mean, but it's for real, but we love each other. The passion comes from love. It really is. It's like, it's, that's what it is. We don't put that much effort and passion into somebody that we hate unless we've loved you for a long time. Like, that's, that's really- the yeah. other, that's the other thing that frustrates me with people. People confuse uh, passion with aggression. Right. It's like, you really, if you don't know the difference, you right. need to go go find yourself. Right. <laughs> Zoe screaming at that christening was love, passion. Like that was love. That was her in his eyes, his perception. That's not like you know what I mean. The way that, that Teresa screams when she cries about him. Are you it, are you saying that Joey Gorga that was passion? Yes, because he's no, yes, no, no. Let let's let's be eyes. let's be so real right now. No, seriously. That man is so unhinged. There was so much rage and yeah. violence in the way he reacted. That was I know. terrible. I don't know where it comes from. I really forgot that they started that season with he's, that episode. He's disgusting. And he's always it's been a disgusting. Bad look. Really. It's a bad look. And they say that he took that from her season one with her flipping the table and they're like that's not it's not that like they he really has that in it like i don't know it's we just fight it's just so it's a shame that that's what the impression everybody got well i'm gonna leave everybody on a final thought and my final thought is melissa and joe gorga can go fuck themselves and that was so much fun it was fun yay (laughs) (laughs) No, no i agree i mean i feel the same way when i tell like I say this stuff about, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to leave this as my final thought is I was team, not Louie. I don't know how to feel any longer. Yesterday threw me for a loop. Teresa, <laughs> I love you. I always have. I want the best for you. I'm just very confused on where your brain was. I would like an answer on where where it went wrong. Where did we go wrong to start having to pay people to drag family members and stuff? That's all I want to know. Maybe we'll get there. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get that from her. I don't want to blame Louie anymore at this point because I'm not sure. So I'll just blame Jennifer Aiden. How's that fucking bitch? That's how I feel. That's how you feel with her. I'm going to tell you, Jennifer Aiden. Fuck the fuck off, bitch. Where the fuck are you from? We ain't drinking the same water. You ain't cut from the same cloth like Dolores said. You and Jackie, fuck the fuck off. 
Okay. All right, guys. We love you. <laughs> Thank you. It was so much fun. I'm okay. going to go get ready for work now. Okay. I know. I feel good. You're hungover. Sorry. It's a Jersey short. You know, it's a tradition. Oh, I'm good now. Oh. I'm great. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Are you still there? <laughs> I don't know if we both hung up. I guess I have to hang up. Bye. <laughs>